Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to explore how we can work with copy command in Snowpark. Okay. So already in our previous video, we discussed different concepts related to Snowflake copy command. All the prerequisite links I'll be sharing in the description box or in the comment section. You can go through that. Now let's try to use that same copy command concepts with Snowpark. Okay. So for that, what I will do first. I will open a python terminal where I will execute all the codes and here in snowflake I have already created a database and using that database here I have created a file format csv file format and then here I am creating an external stage pointing to an s3 location ok so here if you see in our s3 location already I created a bucket with the name csv storer testing and there are two folders are there one is load demo one is unload demo so here in load demo folder i will be uploading some file and then i will use copy command to load the data in snowflake table and as we know using copy command we can unload the data also so what we will do at the end of our discussion we will do one experiment with unloading copy command concept also that we will try to unload some data using snowpark copy command okay right so here if you observe i am creating that particular snowflake external stage pointing to this particular bucket so that the both folders load demo and unload demo both will be accessible i am using access key and secret key based authentication you can obviously use im role based authentication not a problem and now here as of now if i execute list command here i will get nothing because as of now no data is there now here what i will do i will upload some files in load demo folder and we will try to ingest them using copy command okay so here we are having some files we are again using that iris dataset only here if you observe that here we are having setosa class and id column is integer type sepal then sepal with petal then petal with a double type and the last column is varchar type okay so let's upload this particular data so here it is uploaded right now here we have to first execute this all imports we'll do that that is done now here in connection parameter we need to provide account id user id password and all i will quickly provide that so for my case this is the account unique identifier then dot here my account is basically in us is one so i will just take that and user id password i will be providing which i cannot show you so i have created this particular connection parameters now here i will create this session okay right these things already we discussed earlier in our previous video also related to snowpark now here what we are doing to read the csv data from external stage we need to mention this schema right in case of parquet or json or avro we don't need this but in case of csv we need to mention this schema because snowflake infer schema property cannot detect this schema of a csv file directly so here we have mentioned this schema like id column is integer type sepal length sepal with petal length petal with a double type class name is string type whatever our id status it is having the same schema we have defined and now here we are reading the data from that external stage directly so here ramu dot public dot snow simple so ramu is database name public is schema name snow simple is the stage name right so here if you see ramu.public.snowsimple already we have created to this particular bucket and within this bucket in this particular folder our data is sitting so we are giving that folder name and here we are mentioning this schema also and here because we are reading csv file so field delimiter is comma and in our csv file the first row is header so we are giving skip header one okay that is done now here i can use dot show comment to view the data okay and here we can clearly see the data so earlier we discussed that we can use dot write and we can configure the mode as append or overwrite to write the data in a snowflake table from external stage right so here let's use first the write method and suppose the destination table name is iris data write so let's check in snowflake whether that is existing or not obviously it will be not existing because we created the database freshly but still execute this select star command and here you see it is not giving any outcome okay now here i will execute this write mode then we will compare what is the difference in between copy command and this one so one thing which you can see it is not returning any output or metadata information that how much data it has loaded whether it faced any error or not nothing it is returning that is one point which you can easily see 
that directly it went to the next console okay so here let's see whether the table got created or not and the data got ingested or not so here see the data got successfully ingested right and here in this particular table as we know that setosa class is having 50 records so that 50 rows it is clearly showing okay cool now if i again execute write in mode append manner then what will happen again the same data will be appended in the irish data write table and as of now as we can see in this irish data write there are total 50 rows it will be changed to 100 rows because same 50 duplicate rows will be ingested in the same table okay right so here that query is executed if i execute this particular one here you will observe that currently the number of rows it is showing as 100 okay right because in append manner we are writing the data so continuously it will be appended it is not like it will act like copy command that once it insert the data it will not insert again right now let's execute copy command so if you want to load the data using copy command then you can use copy into table instead of write okay here we are copying the data in iris data copy table which is a different table which is obviously not existing as of now so here it is not there and earlier just all we have done that in this data frame we have read the data from external stage and here we are writing this particular data okay so here see the data got written the first difference what you can observe with respect to write mode is here in this copy command it is returning the metadata information what file it has loaded what is the status how much rows it has parsed how much rows it has loaded whether it faced any error or not in what line it has got error all this metadata information this copy command is returning what our write mode was not returning okay right so let's now see whether the table has data or not or the table got created or not and see yes it is there i this data copy earlier it was not there and now we can see 50 records got loaded so copy command when we are executing using copy into table based on the defined schema it is creating the table and then executing the copy command as simple as that okay now let's see another property of copy command is maintained or not that is if i execute again the same copy command as there is no new file in this external stage already the setosa file is loaded whether it will append that same set of data in this particular iris data copy table or it will ignore ingesting that duplicate data let's okay so i will execute that again and see this time it has returned copy executed with zero file processed okay that is we already know that copy command is intelligent enough that it only load that modified data or new data right so that's what same thing is happening here also in snowpark copy command when you are using we have seen that because in external stage there is no new data so if i execute select start from iris data copy here 50 rows only we will be getting it is not like in light mode when we have executed two times then we observe 100 records right but due to copy commands property we are seeing 50 records only so these are two major difference what we have observed till now with respect to write mode number one is write mode don't return anything whereas copy command return all this kind of information about the load and second point what we have observed is the copy command is loading only one file once as we have seen in sql query copy command also okay now here we will observe the second case that is file we will try to ingest which is having some error in it okay right so let's observe such file so if you observe there is another farsi color class is there in our id data set where i have intentionally created an error in the file that petal length this column is basically double type column but here i have given some string data now let's try to ingest this data using write mode and copy command okay so first here i will load this particular data in our external stage okay right now here what i will do i will try to write the data in append manner again from iris flower date okay and see here this time it is throwing exception that 4.2 hello world is not recognized basically this particular data frame is reading the data from this external stage and when we are executing this particular command that save as table in append manner it is reading the complete data from this external stage and when it is reading the farsicolor.csv they are in this particular cell error is available right that's why it is throwing an error which is its default behavior right now let's execute using copy command 
in id's data copy table and let's see what copy command is written right so here see it also thrown the exception that 4.2 hello world 2 is not recognized because ideally it should be a double data type but it is getting a string data type it is giving a suggestion also that if you want to still ingest the rest correct data you can use on error equal to continue property what we have already used in our sql based copy command also the same thing we can use in snowpark based copy command also okay so here you see that we are basically executing copy into table and id is data copy this is the name of the table where the copy command will ingest the data and here we are writing on error equal to continue okay and as we have seen that copy command return all the insert update delete this kind of information so that metadata we are capturing in output of copy command code okay right so here i will execute now so here it got successfully executed now let's see what we got as output of the copy command okay so here it has returned something which is basically row object which is a bit hard to understand so let's convert that to data frame using session dot create data frame and then here let's execute dot show on this data frame to read it okay so here you see it has returned this information what it is showing that first point is here in our external state we are having two files but already copy command has loaded cdusa.csv so it will not load again only versicolor it will try to load okay so here if you observe that files what it tried to load only it is showing that versicolor.csv that is point one and then status it is showing partially loaded okay and why partially loaded because here in one row it was not able to load due to its mismatching of schema right and that also it is showing that row parsed 51 because in this versicolor file, if you just click on one column here, you will see count is 52. If you ignore the first row as header, so there are total 51 rows are available, out of which in one row there is an issue, right? So row first 51, out of that only 50 rows are loaded and here error found for one row and what error that also it has printed, that numeric value, this is not recognized, okay? In what line? it has got error line number 13 you observe this one we are getting at line number 13 only right and here it is showing the table name with the column name also petal then okay here is the problem happening so the complete information you are getting just like when executing copy comment when you get some error then it shows in the result set right that this file is partially loaded this is completely loaded and all same thing this snowpark copy comment is also showing okay right so I hope you understood this, this on error continue property. Now let's see another property what we have done in SQL also. But before going to that, let me show you the table. So here ID is data copy. Earlier 50 records were already there. Now from this Farsi color file, ideally 51 rows should be added, but one row has error. So 50 more new rows should be added. So the count should be increased to 50 plus 50, which is 100. So here if I execute, ID is data copy here as of now we are getting 100 the class name ID set is there and ID is farsi color is there perfect right now here let's try to execute this same command again okay here see it has returned that copy executed with zero files processed why because in our external stage we are having two files which already we loaded using snowpark copy command that's why the count will not change if I again execute from id's data copy how many records are there you will get 100 only right now if you recall if you want to reload the data again which is loaded by copy command that is if you want to ignore the default property you can use force equal to true we used this in sql the same command we can use in snowpark copy command also so if i execute this one force equal to true what it will display it will display that setosa.csv is completely loaded and farsicolor.csv is partially loaded right and the count of records in this particular table which is now showing 100 it should be increased to 200 because duplicate rows will be entered because here we are using force equal to true so that means copy command will not check whether any data it has loaded earlier or not those rows it will ignore or not it will just load all the records whatever is available in external stage as simple as that right so i can execute this one 
and see here it has written the row objects here particular.csv is partially loaded and setosa.csv is completely loaded and here if i execute select star from id's data copy here you will see that due to duplicate entries it will show 200 rows okay as expected it is working and i hope you are getting the snooper copy command and sql based copy command are almost same right now the last thing what we are going to discuss for today's topic that is unloading not only for loading the data from external stage or internal stage to snowflake table we use copy command but for unloading the data to external stage also we use copy command right so here what i will do first let's read some data from a snowflake table for unloading purpose so already we have id's data copy table so i have read that and suppose you are doing some aggregation on top of this data like based on class name you are doing group by then minimum of sepal length sum of sepal width maximum of petal length group wise how many count are there all these things you are computing okay so i can easily execute dot show comment to get all this data here we can easily see that farsi color and serosa both are having 100 100 count which is obvious right because we ingested duplicate records using force equal to true right now suppose these statistics this summary we have to unload in this s3 external location that is unload table as of now which is empty so what we can do we can use the unload command and that command is here if you see that copy result equal to here i am doing that group by or whatever result i want to unload and then here write dot copy into location so this is the method to unload the data from a snowflake query to s3 external stage that is copy into location and then here you have to mention the location where you want to unload the data so this is our external stage and then here this is the folder and the file in which the data will be unloaded this particular statistics i want to unload suppose that name is data3.csv okay the csv file i want to unload the completion i don't want field delimiter i want to keep as comma separated i want to keep the header if the file is existing in external location i want to overwrite and i want to keep a single file not partitioned file okay so here this kind of unloading properties whatever we have seen in sql same thing is shown here also if you have went through my unloading video with sql i hope you can easily understand in description i'll be providing all these links if you just practice once with normal sql query the unloading feature the loading feature with copy command you can understand this easily okay just you need to remember that the method for snowpark copy unloading is write dot copy into location okay right and now let's see whether the data is getting unloaded or not and see it went to the next line that means it is unloaded so let's see what it has written in this particular data here it has written the metadata information like rows unloaded to because here we are having only two rows as part of that group by and then input bytes is this much output bytes is this much why input bytes and output bytes are same because here we are applying compression equal to none if you are applying some compression then obviously you will get higher input bytes and less amount of output bytes which is pretty obvious right now let's see in s3 whether the data got unloaded or not yes it got unloaded now what i can do here i can execute this with uh, query with s3 select csv file and select star from s3 object i can run this particular sql query and here you can see that same data id is farsi color id is setosa 100 100 count and all other statistical information what we were getting using this particular group by that same thing it has unloaded so i hope you understood using snowpark copy command how to load the data and how to unload the data it is same like what we work in normal sql query same kind of concept we can implement in snowpark i hope you understood this all the documentation link also will be shared in the description box if you go through that documentation link you will understand some more functionalities related to all these methods and play with it and try to implement the same then you will understand this particular concept in much better way and implement in your project right all the course help will be provided in the description box or in the comment section this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching